Hello, and welcome to Viewers Have Conflicting Thoughts on Wesk Opinions, round whatever number we're on. I'm here to rank every single extreme trial in the game. Why extreme? Because hard trials are scaled down versions of the extreme fights, where applicable. And hard trials are often very boring, even before the, according to some very loud people, recent trend to make things very easy. So, using a tier maker found in the description, I will be ranking the trials one by one, expansion by expansion, and there will be footage in the background of the hard modes. Unfortunately, this is for many reasons. The main one is that this is a one-man band. I don't have help, so doing nearly 40 extreme trials is extremely hard to get going, let alone people learning, clear times, etc. Either way, I have done every single trial at least on expansion and everyone on content since 2.5 so my thoughts will be based on how they were at the time of release. It's pretty easy to prove that the game has generally gotten more mechanically complex with time, so knocking points off of, let's say, everything from Stormblood and earlier just for age is pointless. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more, hit subscribe. Be sure to also hit the like button, leave a comment, share with your friends, let them leave an angry comment because I said their favorite trial sucks. You can also follow me on Twitch where I play a bunch of stuff and I'm learning Final Fantasy XIV with a controller. Obviously, spoilers ahead, so let's get right into the rankings, starting off with A Realm Reborn. Ultima Weapon was the first extreme trial. We actually got this trial for Unreal and it proved really well that even simple fights can be very hard to some people. A tank swap based on stacks, a lot of positioning for etheric boom, but generally it's just basic dodging. There's some fun patterns in there, but it's nothing too special overall. But again, this was the first extreme. It makes sense for it not to be that special. Also come Endwalker and Unreal, you need tank LB3 just to survive Boom 3. Because of course you do. Because mechanics are hard. As a fight itself, it's alright. I kinda like it. There's enough you have to learn without being overwhelming. Kind of scary as a tank since positioning is more complex than just holding the boss direct mid like normal while being chunked pretty hard. I'll start it off right in the middle of the pack, somewhere B or C. I'll be adjusting the tiers as things go, so it could move slightly up or down. Garuda is a punching bag for a lot of things. Being extremely simple and kind of easy is among them. There's really only two things I think of when thinking about Garuda. The first is the sisters' ad phase, which the tanks just separate the enemies to two spots, then kill them off. The second is the spiny plume, to which I actually forgot was an extreme for years until I did the weapons refrain ultimate. There are definitely more things to Garuda, but the fact that my mind boils her down to literally two things, something I don't even have with Ultima weapon before the Unreal came out, instantly drops her down to D rank. She's not outright a bad fight, but even as far as being simple for a brand new game's harder content, she's entirely forgettable. Something that can never be said of Titan, though that would be hard mode and due to the built-in 200 milliseconds of lag the game launched with. Titan Extreme, meanwhile, does just feel like a straight increase to the hard trial. Landslides upgraded, jails upgraded, arena shrinking upgraded, and some ads that drop puddles to even further restrict space. The fight really forces the entire party to work as a single unit, lest there be no room to dodge anywhere due to weight of the land. Also, upheaval just bleeping hurts. The biggest criticism to the fight is that it doesn't really start until the final phase. Sure, landslide, upheaval, and weight of the land all happen before then, but the arena being so tiny changes the difficulty of each mechanic dramatically. If you're dying to the mechanics before we get that far, you're not going to stand a chance at the real fight, since the mechanics are functionally the exact same. I'm also not entirely a fan of the ads, like, yes, they do exactly what they're there for. The puddles they drop just feel unnecessary, though. Ideally, you just are forced to go left or right instead of both being options. Technically, it makes the fight easier if they're placed right. I do like jails, though. One person staying under Titan, the other going far back, lest the jails be impossible to kill. I actually enjoy this fight. I wouldn't call it an amazing fight, but it definitely deserves B tier at the least. Ifrit sucks, and I hate it. The chain mechanic in this one is different to the normal chain mechanic we're used to. Distance increased damage you and your partner takes, and I think reduced your damage, but you could be tied to the tank, 
forcing you to stay on Ifrit while nails need to be killed. Or the healer, who has searing wind and actively needs to be avoided because the healer is busy exploding over and over. Nails needing to be killed off in a quick but measured speed, you both were fighting in rage and a vulnerability debuff for every nail killed, is a neat idea. But I'm not sure it feels fun. I sure didn't enjoy it. And when I did it, we had far better gear. So surviving the nails was easier, though so was forcing in rage because the tank did too much DPS on Ifrit. D tier. Low end D. Good King Moggle's Mog, long may his stem grow. I actually like this fight. It's like the one way of doing an ad-based fight I like. It's chaotic, but in a good way. You need to rush around, lowering the HP of Moogles without ever killing them. But at the same time, the White Mage and Black Mage will be doing raid-wide AoEs you have to interrupt by doing damage. So there's a timed enrage through everything that's going on, without being a normal enrage. Once you get every Moogle low on HP, you kill off as many as you can to take away as much HP as you can from the king. Do this three times, then with the third time you have to kill every Moogle and push the king down to zero with direct attacks. All the meanwhile, the tanks have to stay spread out and juggle a debuff. They have to provoke back and forth between the king and adds. At the same time, some of the chaos involved isn't so fun. I still don't entirely understand how to survive the like, home gang that happens. I probably did back in the day, but without pulling up a guide, that's information I have just entirely forgotten because it wasn't obvious. At least to me in my memory. But honestly, I think I'll still put it in A. It's a good kind of crazy. Leviathan, Leviathan. Leviathan, Leviathan. My first ever extreme clear. I want to put it in A tier for that, but I can't justify more than a B. I actually really like the boat rocking mechanic, even when the rails get destroyed. The protecting the energy charger is only alright though. High DPS is actively punished here because you could force the phase transition like Ifrit. This was how you died in most cases. You otherwise need to wait for it to slowly charge to 30 points. Deal with adds that can just be super annoying and make sure you keep the healers spread out since they will explode with water now and then. I have a nostalgia for this fight, but I really can't justify that. Overall, it just feels like a mess, and even with my nostalgia, I hated the face pushing. So yeah, B tier. Rama, Ramu, however you say his name, I hate this fight. This is the last fight I cleared of the A Realm Reborn set. It just sucks. The mechanics are relatively simple. The execution, though, is so goddamned high. Get a circle on you, move to the west to east mark. If lightning doesn't land on you, someone brings Thais to you. Meanwhile, tanks are trading the boss back and forth constantly with the timer of their debuff, and this is where everything falls apart. Every lightning strike adds electric orbs to the arena. Three orbs gives you a special buff that makes you take less lightning damage, required on tanks to survive the buster. So they need to alternate the buff and never go over three stacks because then it becomes a debuff. But there's more orbs than the tanks need and more orbs on the arena means Rama does more damage. So you need to alternate who is grabbing orbs, tanks, then DPS, and keep going for the entire fight, while you deal with the hysteria cleansing and the adds when they show up. Then in phase two, you have lightning tether. Same solution, get three orbs to get rid of it. Both people need to stop attacking because actions do damage, like 500 damage a hit, and that was 10% of your HP just about. But which person? You need to set a priority system and hope those people both pay attention, because the moment people start taking orbs when they don't need them, or both tether people taking orbs, they're doomed. You're all doomed, probably, because the tether only gets deleted from the three orb buff. If someone dies, it goes to the next person in line. And the ads in the second phase, their line AoEs are so hard to see. People complain about the visibility of the orange on orange of P3S. You can barely even see these lightning indicators. If those indicators in P3S are bad, yeah, so are these. I do not like this fight or anything about it. F tier. Shiva I have some very mixed feelings about. Good ones about some of the cool people who can do the tank movement perfectly. Bad ones about a samurai who I watched spam AoE skills on her and would not change their rotation for no matter how much advice was given. Phase 1 is alright, 
adds phase is a bit meh, but phase 3 is actually really fun, if a bit overly precise for most tanks. Some wild movements, positioning, and so on. The Kamehameha she does to knock people back is kind of not great, and I don't like the RNG involved for what weapon she uses. I feel the fight would be more tight and more fun if the changes were consistent. Also, Diamond Rain happens far too often. Just please stop dropping the AoEs, ma'am. C tier. Odin. This one is a bit... complex. This one was never meant to be an extreme trial. It's not marked as one, but it does not appear in Trial Roulette. It only appears in Mentor. The Tank Buster also does a good two-thirds of a tank's HP at max eye level, not even the minimum eye level of 95. Even current endgame trials don't do nearly that much. Well, we have far more tools to just entirely delete those busters from existing. I would say even the normal AoE mechanics that get thrown out are harder hitting than most extremes. They're definitely casual content level mechanics to do, but the damage of everything is very much extreme level. The chaotic fate in the Shroud is probably the overall better experience, but because of the weird in-between nature of this one, it was included, and why it goes into D tier. It's not wholly bad, but it toes the line with its in-between nature. And that's A Realm Reborn. Given the age of these fights and how I joined in 2.5 with little time to experience all of these before Heavensward launched, I didn't have too much to say overall. Heavensward and beyond, I've been here, with one exception I'll mention. So right into it, we have the Fail Whale of Bismarck. This fight is bad. It's mostly a glorified DPS race with minimal mechanics. It's a glorified ad fight with, like, one mechanic at once ever. Sky turns purple, spread and don't kill bubbles. Blue, avoid mid and kill bubbles. Yellow, stack tight mid, move back in when the knockback happens, kill bubbles. The main thing most people remember of Bismarck is the snakes and how you kicked Dark Knights basically on sight. Not because Dark Knight was bad, but because they almost guaranteed didn't have Provoke. And Provoke was required to do the tank swap. So most parties would just wipe the moment you got to snakes, because only one tank had Provoke. That phase was also just not fun as a DPS either. If the tank dodged in the wrong direction, you'd get clipped by the cleaves, while you had to dodge the water droplets and the damn tornadoes. Ugh, hated those tornadoes. If you managed to get good tanks, your DPS was just bad. How many black mages who never had an Okian up for more than 10 seconds? I can at least say it did its job of being a gatekeep to people who wanted to do Ravana, because I got gatekept nearly all week just trying to get a group that saw past snakes. F tier. Ravana, meanwhile, is an easy S tier. Even for the first phase being the tutorial phase, it remains interesting by still requiring you to dance. Dancing being how this fight feels through the whole thing. And his theme music is so awesome in both phases. So very different in tone, but so very fitting in both cases. Ad spawns that properly tested positioning and ad management, the different forms of slaughter all testing you in different ways, even the simplest thing of kite orbs around feels like a dance in the context of Ravana. This is a properly challenging fight, has a bunch of different mechanics to remember, and just was always such a fun time. The worst I can say about it is the glitch it had on launch. His phase change, Bloody Fuller, could destroy all of the arena's walls. Some are supposed to survive for his knockback mechanic, but sometimes they just didn't. Bug aside, ha, huh, amazing fight. Thwart and Extreme? I made an entire separate video about this. I skipped over the first two phases in that video to really gush about how much I love the different Knights of the Round sections, but I love even the first two parts. To try to find some criticisms, uh, I guess the phase one into two transition is too slow? And fighting the two paladins has such an extremely lenient and rage timer that doesn't fit the timer for the fight overall. Might be that long for pacing reasons, though. Top slot, go watch that video if you want more. Every single mechanic of this fight just makes me happy. I wish every fight could be that good. Sephiroth is that one exception. 
I did this at the absolute tail end of 3.2, right before 3.3 and Nidhogg. And I was not a fan, even with what was a party that already knew the fight to help and be consistent for my learning. The first phase is kind of dull and doesn't teach you anything used in the rest of the fight like Ravana does. The ad phase is mostly just a heal check and making sure the tanks are awake so the ads don't go eat the DPS. They explode on death and deal significant damage, but it's just... there. When he comes back bigger and Bowser, the fight starts to get interesting. Green and orange dictating which mechanics you do? Neat idea. Execution? Eh. I do like how there's a safety pocket for melee uptime during the Da'at tethers, at the least. But the hardest part of the fight is just the ground punches with earth pillars. People jump the gun and go to do the punches before the pillar snapshot. You need to do the opposite. Pillars, then position. And the fight repeats. You do phase 3 twice before he enrages. He really is just a boring fight at the best of times. D tier. At least his music lets you feel like worlds collide. Nidhogg is a hard one indeed, and has a lot of mechanics. It makes it that when his fourth phase repeats over and over, it doesn't feel like a lack of ideas, but because there was already a lot to handle. Phase 1 is basic with introducing stuff, but that's fine for how the rest of it is. You also learn how to deal with dive bombs. Phase 2 is a challenging ad phase. They hit hard enough that the tank is liable to die if your DPS is sleeping. The middle ad is something made for someone to bait AoEs by being the furthest player and needs to be killed last. Everyone has to keep an eye on it though for if the bait player messes up or if it walks over to do its melee swipe. So it's not free to just hit the striking dummy adds. Phase 3 is Nidstinian. We have what is one of the hardest hitting tank busters in the game and Fang and Claw. Fang and Claw was such a big deal, it came back for an entire phase of its own in Dragon Song Reprise Ultimate. And then so does Roth Flames from the final phase. And for anyone who never did T13, we all got to learn the fear of God with dealing with Ockmorn. This one might be a party stack, but oh boy, did this put fear in everyone. And the exploding eyes made people argue a lot whether a 2 to 1 dodge was possible, especially when people died to it. Hate that this made it to Ultimate 2. Not my favorite fight, but it's very solid. A tier at the least. Sophia is one of my more favorites, that is for sure. Overall, there's not that many mechanics. Donuts, Wide Conal AoE, Sickle AoE are super basic. But we do have the head that does AoEs but sometimes a knockback. The balancing of light and dark. Everyone back in the day had macros to set partners. And the main attraction, the scales. Positioning for the scales was so precise but fun to figure out the pattern. Whether or not it was light or heavy knockback and which side was heavier. The mechanics get combined in fun ways too. Having to keep track of safe spots that then get covered by the head's AoE or needing to balance light and dark during it. The funniest part was definitely Quasar the moment he hit phase 3. Everyone started heading to the corner after phase 2 just to make sure the Quasar got baited in a safe spot. But then you could just skip that entire set of mechanics with enough DPS. It caught so many people off guard. Ad phase was kind of meh though. You kill the mage first because of its gaze mechanic. Then you go after the Dragoon. They should have been pulled to the corner by one of the tanks to make sure the Ring of Ice is out of the way. Then kill Paladin, watching for his directional shield. People also started doing the sacrifice strat for his stack mark. Rather than stacking and making sure the target player survives, just let them die. In this phase, death was actually a zombification. So when everyone runs to the corner, they follow anyway. So it's a kind of funny and maybe possibly intended solution. Not like the DPS check here exists. I want to put it in S tier, but I think I can only justify a high A. It's fun, simple and clever ways, but not like amazing design. Good music too. Finally, we have Zervin. Skip Sore or Disband. That describes this fight enough, but I'll go on. I love the music, love his voice lines, and endlessly quote, Good and evil, the war eternal! Phase 1 is kind of just there to hold parody for the hard version. Everyone just stacks up so the explosions don't cover the entire arena and just wait for the transition. Do as much DPS as you can. So it is a mechanic nobody could ever do. People just could not spread, could not then stack up, and just couldn't read the dives even. So instead, we skipped it. 
It was doable with a normal party composition, but not without good players, and likely also specific jobs. But most parties would go for 5 DPS and still fail. I've seen a lot of people say that Unreal, you could not skip Soar, but unless you've actually tested it, that's definitely not true. I've gotten to 76% before the first Soar cast in Unreal. 75% is the skip. So unless he's been hard programmed to do it, grab a 5th DPS instead of a tank. Skip Soar, or disband. But okay, you made it past Soar, so then Cross is just phase 1 again, but somehow people still fail that. Just stack up, rotate clockwise, ta-da, you win. Add phase, eh. It's really no different to hard, even with the added gaze mechanic. Tethers is the real fight. Three patterns to learn with him doing a different AoE after each pattern. A donut, a circle on him, or a 270 degree cone in front. There can be some precise movement and positioning to survive these. It repeats over and over, and teeters the border of overdoing it, but being different patterns you have to deal with keeps it interesting more than it would be like with Sephiroth. Overall, I think it can only justify a B. I have good memories and enjoy the fight, but skip Sora or disband. Pretty good showing from Heaven's Ward. Some of my favorite fights and mostly overall just fun ones, but also ended up having Bismarck, so that's quite the black mark. Can Stormblood keep up the momentum? This is the expansion people tend to say has the best content, so it should, right? Right? Starting off, we have Susan. Back in the day, I think I had a positive opinion of this one, but it definitely has degraded in my mind. It's another fight that doesn't feel like it's going until later on. The intermission second phase is kind of neat to be a thing, and gives both tanks something to do. But then things take a turn when the sword landing now leaves a thick permanent gap in the arena. Added into extreme is a lightning markers that force players to disengage from the boss, cross the gap, and take a lightning strike. This strike will electrify the entire side of the arena it lands on, so take it over or you get everyone killed. Tank Buster also has an attached Vuln for tank swaps, but like, that's it. It's otherwise nearly the exact same as hard. I guess the knockbacks also have an attached cloud AoE too? And pulling up a video of it? Oh yeah, later on the lightning strikes stun you first, so the entire party has to cross over instead. Oh, and there's Acceleration Bomb. Yeah, I don't know. It's kind of just a boring fight. Though the hilarious bit is that the video I check, the Scholar is casting Physic, and I'm like, dying. <laughs> they cast it so many times, and the White Mage got free cure. Ah, but yeah. That much is actually more interesting to me than the fight itself. It really is just the same motions, and few motions on average. D tier. It's not outright terrible, but it's so boring. Lakshmi, though, is a million times more interesting than both Susan and her heart mode. Vril might have three stacks in this version, but you have to use it so much more smartly and efficiently. Though overall, it has the same flaw as Susano. It's basically the same fight. And more smartly using Vril is basically just any time she uses Chanchala, I believe it's called. Double checking. Yes, Chanchala. The fact I remembered the name should at least show my respect for this fight. So it's like... Basically the same fight with some added bells and whistles, and a really bad ad phase. I get what they were going for, there's four ads that ping pong a piece of Vril back and forth, kill the one who has it to get the Vril to survive the enrage. But like, in practice, I do not have a fun time with that. But once she gets going, the amount of spamming she does makes this far more interesting. Susano just feels slow. This fight at least felt fast. I preferred this fight back in the day, and still do today but it's never been, like, one I'd want to go out of my way to go at again. B tier. Shinryu is actually a fight that massively, massively disappointed me after they said it would be similar to Thordin in terms of difficulty. And then it massively wasn't. And so I held a grudge that would make me put it in F tier automatically. But that's not fair, let's give it a real shot. We skipped right to the back half of the fight with the platforms, but now there's no safe center platform, in fact, if this platform breaks, the entire arena breaks. So you intentionally have to aim his tail wax, which pick a random target, onto platforms without cracks. It's a neat idea, but the RNG involved in what platforms end up cracked can make some runs way harder. 
Like, oh, this time I have to jump over a gap to break my tether, or otherwise get where I need to. Most of the mechanics are the same otherwise. Arc Morns, the different elemental effects. But there are these dragon heads that appear and tether onto four players. You have to spam heals on those players to heal the dragons to max HP. It's a really odd version of a heal check, but not too bad. It's an interesting enough time, but the RNG very much does take some of the fun out of it. And then we have a dumb ad phase. Meteors pick players, spread them out kind of like the first two waves of meteors. If they're too close together, they explode, otherwise it kind of is nothing. Transferring into the final phase, I do love running across Shinryu's tail as he tries to blast you with AoEs. It's stupid, but in a good way. The final phase itself, no, I don't like. The dragon heads come back and he just does basic versions of the same mechanics from the first phase. The tank buster at least kind of hurts. People tended to just really mess up tether breaking, and the end is just weird. You jump up onto his back and kill his wings before he enrages, then jump off to finish off the main body. The devs have gone on record with Eden 4 that verticality is like an unwritten sin with coding fights, and you can feel it with this enrage. Sometimes the hitboxes just don't feel like they're working right. Even jumping off of him can be a chore. I at least appreciate the game doing something different with this fight, I just hope the ultimate of it is more fun, because even trying to give it credit, I can't justify more than the bottom of C tier. I can't say it's a bad fight, but I really don't want to put it high. Biako Extreme is the fight I got the mount for first, I believe. And despite that fact, I found it extremely forgettable and needed a video to remember the mechanics that were added. His grab someone and stack thing now gives a Voln up that you need to split the party. There's a bunch of added AoEs. The Tiger is an actual secondary enemy now, and the Tiger is given some orbs to heal if you don't face tank them. Boring changes for first phase overall, but the real fight is after the Tornado, which said Tornado, I'd say is easier in extreme because most of the orbs are part of a set pattern that are free to dodge. A waste of a phase. Once things get going, it's phase one again, but with the phase two mechanics added in. The, like, one new thing it adds is expanding AoEs that you just take to the edge if you get the mark for. But it's not combined in any really interesting ways. It is combined, don't get me wrong. You have to deal with the spinny orbs and then also a pair of the grabby stacks. So placement does matter. You do want them on specific spots in the arena. But I don't feel like Extreme adds to the fight in any meaningful way. It's harder, but that's about it. Which, Biako itself is a pretty fun fight when you aren't forced to do the tornado garbage. So, like, that gets it a C. But the lack of any meaningful changes for an extreme, I put this in C. Tsukiyomi is a fight I really hated. People were really bad at it. The Spears mechanic is to split up into healers, tanks, and DPS. One of each will get an AoE thrown at them. This alone was enough to break people, let alone the meteors. But also she could do a stack instead. And oh god, the meteors. In the black and white floor section, your stacks accumulate so much faster than in hard. The precision is so much tighter. Then one side will begin to eclipse the other. You need to take this eclipse into account for placing three meteors. Where they land will turn them into that color. The meteors will then explode into puddles of that color. To survive, you need at least one meteor of the eclipsed color. You also need to survive being in the eclipse until the meteor explodes so you can run into the puddle before your stacks hit 5. This timing is pretty precise. Many parties would straight up wall here, even with markers. The other big mechanic was remembering her big moon explosion she does toward the end. Whether she fuses with the light or the dark of the moon would indicate a donut or boss scented AoE. Or dynamo and chariot for you boomers. Bright and dark blade would be whether you needed to be on her right or left. Once you get past meteors, the fight is really fun. I like this part. I really hate meteors, and the fight up to meteors is just nothing. A stack or three group stack, the ad phase that has good music and is super cool for the first time, but gets really old fast on repeated pulls, especially when you wipe to the first meteors. So I'm still not a fan. Even if people didn't suck at meteors, I don't find it fun. I find it extremely interesting and neat as a mechanic, but not fun. And I'm writing more on fun than concept. So I'm putting Tsukiyomi in D tier. It's frustrating to have to do so much fight just to see something interesting. This rating probably upset some people. Rathalos. I loved Monster Hunter, and I played Try on Wii with the Wiimote and Nunchuck. 
Switch hex means unite. Creepsoid and hunting horn users are based. The rest of you need to get on their level. The fight itself is super dull for the most part. Like, stand to his back left and you are safe from every single mechanic he does in the first phase. When he turns, turn with him. Turns to look at you, run to his left and toward the back. Then in the third phase, stand right behind him, a little bit extra for when he does the frontal tail whip. The potion chugging being a mechanic is hilarious, though there's not enough animation lock for my liking. And the stack mechanic is like, sort of frustrating because so often people would go maverick and try to forcibly not stack. Oh, I'm tank, I'll solo it. Tell us that before the pool? Because that wasn't standard procedure, at least not yet. I do like how they added knockdowns and tail cuts as mechanics. The flavor is very much there, very faithful to a Rathalos hunt, though he's a bit easier than a real Rathalos would be. C tier. Suzaku Extreme. Finally, some good fucking food. This fight is actually cool and fun. The first phase has a lot it does, even if it screws over openers with the dive bomb. The game forcing a real effort for the ads, killing four feathers with the party spread out onto four spots, is way better than hard stacking in middle that everyone fails to do. DDR sucks though. It takes so long and isn't that difficult. I hate that I could say I've wiped to this. Once we get into Simon Says though, and the music kicks in, god I love it. The speed of the Simon Says keeps you on your toes. Her knockback has a suck version to watch out for now. The towers are fun to resolve. And while I hate that I lose control of my character to deal with the auto-walk flames, the actual mechanic is fun to deal with. Just don't sprint. It's hectic, energetic, and just fun. Very much the best of the auspice fights. Though she doesn't have as awesome and silly a line as NO MORE GAMES! No more bad rankings. A tier. Wait, did I say no more bad rankings? Snake goes in F tier. Seiryu is just so dull of a fight. First phase, once again, is just so much nothing. No matter how many people I tell it to, people refuse to stop eating the walls and make him teleport to the edge because of him always going to the furthest player. Ad phase is at least fun to watch go off, but much like Sephiroth, the enemies are just a heal check, and DPS check for don't kill everything at once, idiots. I barely ever died that way in Sephiroth. Here in Snake, it happened so many times. Then we get to water mode and I'm just... So tired. It's just a ton of knockbacks and dodging left and right two steps for the water dude in the back. I know the meme is stand there and let the mechanic resolve, but this fight mostly feels like that. I'm nearly willing to call this the worst trial in the game with how boring it is. Even its music is probably the most boring of this entire expansion. Well, there's revolutions. Even when he starts doing the two healer line stacks in a row, you're probably only wiping because your group can't agree on whether you're doing true north or not. Yes, really. It's an easy fight, a boring fight, and I wish I didn't have to do it. Kugane Ohashi is not an extreme fight, but honestly, I feel like this would make for a good one. Anytime they pull Greg out, he has so many mechanics. The casual content Greg fights have more mechanics than some extreme fights. It's that ridiculous. I feel like if they put him into an extreme fight, he'd be super fun, but he isn't, so I'll not be including him on the list. But I did want to mention it. Big oof. Stormblood, despite being an expansion I very much overall enjoy, had some of the consistently worst trials. Suzuku is pulling a lot of dead weight by herself. I feel bad for her in a brand new way now. Luckily for Shadowbringers, it's not nearly this bleak. Starting off with Titania, I actually really liked this fight, and unlike most people seem to, I actually really like her music. She has a lot of different mechanics from brambles, both the barriers and the tethers, to water to ice. Can you guess which one is no longer just a voice line, but actually part of the mechanic? And honestly, I really like the lightning tether in the forest. Simply just need an established order for who takes win, but it's really good. Though, I'm also someone who had no problem with Bulwark in Omega-10 Savage. Ad phase is far more interesting in Extreme, which I can't say for a lot of these fights we've gone through. A lot more mechanics or just basic AoEs to dodge. Also, tanks actually doing their job, because in this hard mode play you're seeing, I dodge an ad and then immediately realize, wait, I just marked myself for death, and panic. 
because the tanks never bother to aggro these. Once we're down to just the West Ad, though, it's kind of nothing until it dies. I can criticize the fight in that the final phase is just the same mechanics again. On the bright side, the water puddle mechanic is supercharged. She'll do a rune during the puddles, then brambles for the fire stacks. Normally, you stack east and west for the first fire puddles, but brambles can force north and south. I really, really wish she had more mechanics, because what she does do is fun to deal with. But going back through this, it makes you realize how simple this fight is. B tier for sure, though. It's just fun. Fat Tony gets hot, meanwhile, I never had too high of an opinion of. It's definitely a hard fight and fitting. But I have a lot of bones to pick with the boneless chicken wing here for the first phase. You always got that one party member who would stand in the middle of nowhere so that anytime you got the aimed AoEs, they would get hit and yell at you. Even though the entire boss is safe, they got hit, so you are the one who messed up. Somehow. I at the very least enjoy all the blades he shoots out, having to remember they shoot back across later. The spinny AoE though, could very much do without. And the ad phase I find very boring at the best of times. Luckily, the back half of the fight is very different and saves it by a wide margin. Sure, we still have many of the same AoEs, but both his distance-based dash across the arena and the circle thingies he places are great, especially since the circles he places have different versions. The first one you just avoid all three because it's a tutorial to show they explode. The times after, you have to send two people out at a time as they get giant AoEs. Can't let those AoEs explode the circles or you'll wipe. Then a line stack you have to point away from these circles. Then the third version is four circles while a bunch of AoEs get thrown out. You have to move him into position during these AoEs so that this time you can use the line stack to blow up one of the circles to make a safe spot. The back half of this fight is far cooler than the first half. I'm torn between B or C tier though. It's neat, but not being that fun for most of it isn't that great. I think top of C? Top of C seems fair. Hades Extreme is another one I was extremely disappointed by. THE Emmett Selk. And then his final epic phase over the final days of Aetherius is a big nothing burger. And then even before then, the mechanics aren't that complex. The first phase is almost just... hard mode. But he spams double a lot more. That much I appreciate. Keeps you moving. But they kept the falling circles and just made it last longer? Even on launch day, it was more of a meme of how much could you greed them without taking a Voln. Not dying. Dying was never the fear. At the very least, I appreciate that Shadow Spread is a Protean Wave-like mechanic. The blue mirrors and red orbs just seem like something they threw in for the sole purpose of not being exactly the same as hard. Even though I'm pretty sure Extreme is made first. The awful ads phase is replaced with a much more mechanics-focused mini ultimate. To the point that I feel we already know what Hades' ultimate looks like. It's Nabriala's, La Habrea, Iggy Yorum, Hades, and Super Ultra Hades. Even more so than what the final phase of this extreme is. Hell, they even had a puzzle mechanic of sorts with universal manipulation. I like this part of the fight. Mini ultimates are good. It goes downhill in the third phase, though. It starts with... Nabriala's again. Plus the, like, kidnapping orb from Hard. Oh yeah, because it's again the Majestic. Then is again the Martyr into again the Abyssal Celebant. Both feeling of Ashian Prime. Martyr is just universal manipulation again. Though I gotta give it to Abyssal Celebant, this one is just cool even for the very easy solution. But then Dark Seal is... basically nothing? Into the mashing ATM from Hard. The final phase is more than it is in Hard, but it's hardly an upgrade. To the point that there's safe spots greedy people use to entirely ignore the Exa Flares. And that's his main mechanic. During a massive heal check, for extreme standards, there's two tank towers that don't even seem to do any damage with even slight mitigation. Hell, no mitigation, because he's probably got a bunch on him for Gigantomaki. That hurts way more than the tank buster. And he does it two times. And it's over. Oh look, just like an ultimate. The final phase being a victory lap just like Yukob. It even has the Exaflares and big damage. This really is just a mini ultimate, which is a cool concept. But the individual phases don't work quite as well when there's so much lower stakes in speed. 
I'll put it in C tier for good ideas, but overall I'm still feeling listless. Ruby Weapon Extreme. I just got done talking about Yukob. Why is Nail here? This is a fight that has a large resemblance to its hard mode, but added stuff at basically every turn with hella good music. The Flexiclaw of Curving AoEs has bits going off during. The Digging Flexiclaw into Liquefaction or Undermine comes with AoEs after that you have to place in good spots. His dive bombs come with Quicksand now, and she'll pull out a claw during it. Ruby Dynamics adds a second attack called Cut and Run that forces everyone to very tightly spread at the edges, plus some proximity AoEs. Now this is an extreme. It adds so much and all of it is fun. The Nail Phase? I'm sometimes surprised that you get a checkpoint here. But this phase does the same thing with adding a ton. Nail Clones do Chariot and Dynamo. There's ethereal dragon heads that you have to run away from. The medias are completely different now. Now everyone gets one and it's an order of 1 to 8. Oh my god guys, it's Limit Cut! They used numbers! But seriously, it's not just hide behind the medias when the big one lands. It's be behind the 8th one because they also explode in order. Said explosion will also kill you, which is just some minor damage in hard. And the 4 comets you have to block, there's only 2 here. They're specifically for tanks, but now you have to avoid shooting AoEs towards the comets. It's just a shame it's kind of very easy. Like, Nail is pitiful. But like, that says a lot for how even more pitiful she is in hard mode. Extreme adds on so much more and is so different, but still fails to really impress in the back half. Honestly though, I gotta give it the A tier. Poor showing on the back half due to ease, but the mechanics are enjoyable. Memoria Miseria is a fight I've laughed at so much. Probably the single most pitiful DPS check in the entire game. The point he seems to actually start putting up a real fight, good groups will already be killing him, and overall he's not that hard to learn. My static cleared some members completely blind in a few pools, though that's a bit unfair. A group that can clear the Epic of Alexander versus extreme content is a wide gap. So let's look at the fight itself. It actually has a lot going on. A ton of different mechanics, each with their own solution. All the different gun shield versions combined with the elemental strikes and additional mechanics. While everything is extremely learnable, I think this is one of the better ways to design an extreme. Even his ad phases are cool. Well, maybe not the first one since it's just a different version of Susano, but the second one is just a whole bunch more mechanics to learn while still being up against the North Wall. Spreads and stacks galore make up the vast majority of this fight, but each one comes with different specific contexts. It's quite literally the way to make old mechanics still feel fresh with how many different ways Varus uses them. For being a non-standard extreme, this would be the best of them if it had a real DPS check. But because the only reward for this was Diable Glamour, they didn't want to overdo it. So a good group is going to just completely skip Fortius. And I'm not even talking about in later patches, I mean on launch. People were skipping Fortius, which were rotating Protean waves placed on players. I really do wish I didn't clown on this fight as much as I did back in the day. Because the DPS check being pitiful aside, everything this fight does is just extremely cool. I gotta dock points for said check, but it's still a top of A tier fight for sure. If I really want to be generous, absolute bottom of S tier. But I'll leave it on A unless too many are in A. The Warrior of Light himself is here to be a fairly mid fight. Or is how I felt it was. I've softened up on it though. The first phase does get a bit boring through repetition more than most fights I feel. A huge portion of it is just watching him stock his different elements for use in a little bit. But it's very much the learning phase of the fight to prepare you for later. Especially considering the three different limit breaks he does. Ad phase is one of the most involved with proximity flares, stacks, towers, and tethers. There's little reacting involved here, so it becomes rote memorization of movement, which can't even be said for the first phase. Final phase is the Warriors of Light phase. He'll summon one of four different sets of mechanics. Warrior and Summoner, Black and White Mage, Dark Knight and Bard, and Ninja. Because by himself the ninja does a lot. But each one is a very different mechanic 
with very different solutions. Quintuple cast is what everyone remembers from this fight. And yeah, it sounds exactly what it is. He will quintuple cast store all his different attacks and use them all within like 10 seconds. You have to remember the order. Honestly, yeah, I'm super into that, even if I was kind of annoyed when doing it. I was just being a grump. The final phase having only the in-betweens being the same per pull makes it far more interesting. No matter how good you get, you have to deal with some of these. Though don't expect you have to do all of them. You have to die a lot to need that. Otherwise, I think this deserves an A tier. I was too hard on it for how much I really did enjoy it. Our second weapon fight of Emerald Weapon is one I wanted to be nicer to, but the first phase is just... so... bad. The first mechanic being a clockwise or counterclockwise rotation just feels like an unintended thing for how the rest of the fight works. The spinning lasers is just a time waster for how much you want to greed, and the magnet patterns they did add just make the phase feel easier than hard. I at least appreciate the two versions of Split, but I really just felt like Phase 1 was an obligation rather than an encounter. The real encounter begins with the Gaius phase, and the damn awesome music. This phase has plenty of different mechanics for how fast it goes by. Proteans, the weird sword knockback things, both versions of Split, the Falling Swords, and the Black Wolf mini phases. Things are very lenient with how there's phases of low party-wide responsibility, but overall a ton to deal with. Also, I love how the second Black Wolf mini phase is both the flying things and the soldiers at once. There's not that much new to this phase, but it definitely feels like so much more than hard. Context really does a lot, which says even more for the fights I don't feel different enough from hard. But I really just don't like the first phase. I will at least put it high C for the awesome second half, but the first half really does bring it down that much. Finally, we end on Diamond Weapon, a fight I enjoyed so much I actually felt compelled to make a guide for it. This is probably the fight that most exemplifies the idea of using all the same mechanics in ways that make them feel entirely different. The vast majority of things are the same as in hard, but the changes matter so much. Diamond Rain is now based on how many players are on a platform, forcing light parties for the entire fight. And then the teleporter cooldown is so long, every teleport must be consciously measured. In the second phase, all of the indicators are gone, and we realize just how many bit enemies were added for extreme. Where before there was a lot of safe space, the entire platform, half of it will now be the wrong direction. We have to pay attention to the weird sky orbs and the bits, and it matters so much more than you'd think. Then the end of the fight adds Flood Ray. Oh, it's Limit Cut! Limit Cut! Give it up for Day 15! My annoyance aside, this is one of the faster Limit Cuts, arguably faster than Panda 9. The Flood Rays are all so huge, if you're not in position, you're all dead. And I think it's forced to be a 4 point Limit Cut. 2 point seems genuinely impossible without forcing everyone to have Sprint. Point is, this is a constant test of timing and attentiveness. The mechanics are the same, but much harder and harder hitting. Even when you know the puzzle solution, you have to execute on it. And the execution is very tight across the whole thing. By far, deserving of an S tier ranking. There we go, much better showing after Stormblood. There's still some stuff there I don't like, but we're trending much more upwards. The real question is if Endwalker can keep up the momentum for the push to the finish. So moving right on. Bowser's facelift here is actually a pretty fun fight that really breaks people's minds. The right click rotate 90 degrees just cannot be overcome by some. Spatial awareness to its logical conclusion, I think. With indicators removed, you have to learn the positionings for safe spots, and now also take into account the fire line thing. The Falling Stars also get so many people with the much harder patterns. He combines all his old mechanics in nice ways, even if a lot of them are still pretty slow. When he goes quick though, it's a good kind of hectic. Snakes with his ground punches and other such combinations. What I didn't like is his little ad phase with the orbs. It's kind of just a pace breaker. I guess they wanted a clean transition between the intro and the main body of the fight. This was their solution. 
I'm not a fan of it though. We already have big pauses when he summons the star patterns. This isn't quite a full pause, but breaks the pacing for sure. Also, apparently people hate Dragoon in this fight, and I'm just sitting here having little to no issue, thinking it must be skill issue. Maybe they're too busy trying to bop to the music? B tier. Hydaelyn herself was a fight that is much more standard. She's a warrior of light. Well, light. She will store an element to use later, while she chooses to use Dancer, Paladin, or Mage for an AoE she sends out. It's all the same mechanics as hard again, just indicators removed. At least until you get into Ad Phase. Ad Phase is entirely different. Sherry is still killing the crystals, but you have to kill them in a specific order. Some of them will glow and will speed up the Enrage timer. There's also actual enemies to kill. In hard mode, they just do dive bombs. Here, they hurt hard and need to be kited around the arena. Any crystals they're close to become invincible. After the crystals, kill the big adds. This is far more interesting. Post adds Hydaelyn really stops messing around. We start playing around with crystals and light waves. When a light wave passes through a crystal, it will explode with light. You need to hide behind other crystals to line of sight the AoEs, and honestly, it's really cool. The downtime risks kinda suck, but overall the mechanic is just so cool. And then there's the mechanics that are just the same in hard mode but faster. But like, yeah, it's fine in the specific context and how they're combined with mechanics. And removing indicators really does change things a lot. There's a stack because she used Earth. In hard, you see the marker. Extreme, better remember that she used Earth. Honestly, I'd say this belongs in A. This is a good fight. Even the repeated mechanics don't feel like they're overstaying their welcome. End Singer, meanwhile, is the biggest example of a missed opportunity in the entire game. This fight is so forgettable. I had to look up a clear to remember anything about it. Some of the previous fights I pulled up to remember more granular details or how specific mechanics worked. The only part of End Singer I remembered is her time manipulation. When the Epic of Alexander exists, you are expected to perform. We know these devs can make amazing time-based stuff. And you know, the five-head rewind mechanic is a really good example. And then, that's it. That's the only mechanic I remembered. I even forgot the fact she summons multiple planetoids and rewinds those. I also hate that mechanic to begin with, but I forgot it. I forgot it exists entirely. They could have went so much further with the time stuff. The Tears vs. Mouth Blast, or how about rewinding the towers plus tethers? Choose four random towers, two on each side, and two random pairs of players to be rewound. Then, choose the other set. Make set two of players resolve some kind of stack or spread while the first set does their towers. Then, swap places. Set two has to do towers while set one has the stack. They do have something similar, with the part where everyone gets debuffs they have to resolve, and she rewinds those. But so much of the fight is just dominated by those damn planetoids instead of something cooler. So much missed potential. So not fun. I can't justify an F tier, because it does have good parts. D tier. Storm's Crown and Babariccia is super easy to learn, but it's such a fast and hectic fight. I feel like this is a fight that is perfect for teaching people how they should be treating, well, everything. So many parts of the fight are stand there and move several inches in one direction or the other to dodge. You don't need massive movements for so many different things. Measured and understood movements win the day. Then the speed of them comes in too. You need to be quick with those measured movements. You can't delay or something is going to hit you. You still need to act, but not act in wild and wacky ways. The boss is already doing that. She's throwing out so many different AoEs, so many mechanics that all amount to being a mess of effects, but you learn to process it all, break it apart, and remember, even though there's a lot of effects, the solution is simple. It's a fun, fast fight with a few genuine curveballs. Even while mostly being the same mechanics as hard mode, the speed and combinations are cranked up to a 10. Even the healing needed is cranked up. I've heard from a number of people that the healing in this is actually pretty hard, especially her ground slams. The fight really has it all. It's not this super amazing game-changing experiment. 
but it embodies everything higher tier content can teach any player. That's why I'm torn on ranking it. It definitely deserves an A rank for its gameplay, but the teaching aspects? I feel that deserves to push it into S rank, so I'm going to put it bottom of S rank for that. Rubicante is sadly a fight I despise. I have in many cases been complained to or asked to turn down player effects because they can't see the fight, even though the boss model is unrelated to the mechanics going on. I have had effects on for even ultimate level content. This fight? This is the fight that broke me. I need effects limited to be able to read the floor lines. It hurts my eyes, it's impossible for me to see. I needed to go to limited effects. I will say over and over, Pandemonium 3, the Phoenix, I had no issue seeing the AoEs. And yet the floor bullshit with this one, I needed effects lowered to parse it. And it ruined any enjoyment for me from the word go. On top of this, the ad phase is just a waste of time. The less said the better. The mechanics in the back half that don't involve the floor at least are much better on average. But even then, he still has hard to read mechanics. He'll be floating up in the air, wing outstretched, and that wing is telling you what mechanic is next. Up in the air, but luckily not as hard to read if you see it. I just can't get past my hate of this one. There's some good parts, but so much of the fight is slow and boring and just dealing with the spinny floor. F tier. I despise this one. Get gone, loser. Golbez is another fight I enjoyed. He combines mechanics in a few fun ways and changes up mechanics from hard to be harder in different ways. Double rocks for Terra Storm, Wind AoEs being a more random order, and so on. Stuff hits hard, he has good puzzle mechanics with some light execution, and in general just does so much more. He gets really hectic at points, brings back a number of mechanics we haven't seen in a while, and generally just does a good job of being a huge threat. Enough of one that I did push to make a guide for it. Honestly, unless I go into listing mechanics, I don't have a lot to say. I feel this is just a really good fight that is by the books. Doesn't reinvent the wheel, Golbez explicitly wants to break the wheel, but is just solid all around. A tier fight. And finally, we end on Zeromis. F tier. This fight is so boring, dude. He does combine mechanics in a few ways, but mostly it's just boring. The one major thing he does is the meteor phase. It's so damn precise. Even with people who are smart enough to scoot up so there's room for the second group, there's barely enough room for everyone. The black hole placement is a nice enough difference, but people don't realize placing it in the corner is safer and more consistent half the time. And then it's like, yeah, fight's done. The biggest sin of this fight is 25% of it being the Baron Castle theme. It's the definition of an anti-climax. I'm not that big on the Zeromis theme in general, but this is just a downgrade. It's not an epic pump up for the finish track. It's just bland. Even the mechanics are kind of just... there. It almost feels like they ran out of ideas, and this is what we got. I'm going to get my dragon and get out, assuming I didn't. I've forgotten if I did, because I wish I could forget this fight exists. And these are my final rankings. We got a lot of trials in every ranking. From the best trials to the absolute worst, these are just like, my opinions, man. How much did I anger you, though? I'm sure I got plenty of comments about how I'm wrong or something. That's pretty common. I'm used to it. But remember, I'm always the one who wins in the end. Please hit the like button, subscribe, and check out all my links below. I stream over on Twitch. Support is appreciated in whatever ways you can offer. In the meantime, leave a comment about what fights you love and hate, and I'll be very loudly judging you. Take care and may the power of Anadid Hogs lay waste to your enemies.